We love you. Know in your heart that you are loved. We bless you. And you are a blessing to this world. We appreciate you. You are an individualized expression of God. We behold the Christ as you. The kingdom of heaven is all around you and within you. We We look look forward forward to to the the time time when when we will be together together again. again. Good morning, my lovelies. How nice to see you here this morning. I'm Reverend Pat Bessie, and I'm the lead minister at Unity Center for Spiritual Growth, and it is my joy to be with you this morning. It is uh, really fun to um, watch you come in, and I'm seeing so many of you um, putting your names in the chat boxes, saying good morning to everyone. You know, I know that this isn't the same as uh, being together um, in one space, but um, it is another way of us connecting. And I'm so grateful for the technology that we have today in order to do that. So I'm glad you're here with us this morning. I just want to say hello to some of you, Barbara and Steph and Carol and Sally and Dawn and Patty. And if you are with us for the very first time today, we would love to welcome you. So if you would be willing to put your name in the chat box and tell us where you're from, um, that would really be helpful because I know many of the people that are in the chat box would love to reach out and say good morning to you and welcome you. So here we go. And um, I'm going to turn it now over to Dina as she opens us with our opening song. Sorry, I haven't turned up my monitor. There. Come, let us gather to This is a place of love. We come together as people of prayer. This is a house built on love. Come, let us gather in peace. This is a sacred space. We join our hearts here in one loving family. This is a house built on love. We come together as people of prayer. This is a house built on love. Thank you, Dina. And would you join me in prayer? And I just want to say that Jack Cole is our prayer partner this morning, and he is holding us all in prayer this morning. And we are so grateful for his service. And so now let us join in prayer as we drop down into our heart space, into that place where love abides. And we open up to this glorious day. Here where I am, the sun is shining. It is another beautiful day. And I hope wherever you are, it is a beautiful day as well. Because no matter what the weather is, it's how we see it and how we think about it that makes it beautiful. 
So as we open up to this day, we let the love that we are pour out. We know that there are many places on this planet right now that love is needed. We hold all of the people in California that are uh, dealing with these huge fires. I can't even imagine what that must be like for them. We just surround them in our love and hope that they feel that love coming towards them. And also hold, um, again, uh, Louisiana as another hurricane seems to be barreling down on them. Um, so many things happening within our climate that is just um, harrowing. And so we just know, I, somebody said to me this week, and I love it, that whenever I get in a place of worry or, or concern, I have to remember that God is greater than anything that is showing up right now. God is greater than anything. So with that knowing, we just say, thank you, God. Thank you for this time together. Thank you for the love that we share with one another. Thank you for the fact that we can come together in this way and connect. And so for that and so much more, we are grateful. And we say thank you. And so it is. And we let it be. Amen. Amen. And I see other people that have come on. I see Joanne down in New York. Oh, Joanne, it's so good that you're here with us. And Julie and Ingrid, Pat Barkey, Yvette, Lisa, Jan Perlman. Oh, we have so many. Oh, I just see Rev Leroy jumped in there. So I'm very grateful for each and every one of you. And so let us begin now with our invocation. And we'll bring Dina back on as she has the, there she has it. Wonderful. It's an art for her to get this ready for us. <laughs> there we go. Uh, no, a little, yeah. there we go. Yeah. There we go. And Christine has put it in the chat box as well. So let us say together, there is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life. God, the good omnipotent. And when all else seems like it's barreling down on you, just remember that one statement, one power, one presence in the universe and in my life, God, the good omnipotent. And let us say together our vision statement. This is our vision for Unity Center for Spiritual Growth, and it is centered in divine love. We celebrate a spiritually transformed world. And I've been saying, we've been saying this um, vision statement now for since 2012. And I have to say, I am seeing this happening in our world. Even with all the chaos that seems to be going on, we know that we have to have that before we come into true community. So I am very excited that we are on our way to seeing that vision in expression. And our mission statement, which supports our vision, is Unity Center for Spiritual Growth reaches in to reach out through education, service, and creation of community. Prayer is at the foundation of our ministry. And that's why it's so important for us to have our prayer partners holding space for us and, and holding even throughout the week. They are holding each and every one of us in their prayer time. And then we have core values that we live by, and they are, we are loving, we are accepting, we are authentic, we are transformative, we are soul-centric, we are compassionate, and we are welcoming. And all of these core values really lead us back into that uh, we're seeing a, a celebrating a spiritually transformed world. For when we are showing up, exhibiting all of these core values. That's what we will see. And so I'm going to turn it back over to Dina as she shares with us this morning our um, congregational song. All right. Congregational song is Break Them On Down, and it's got two columns of lyrics, so you'll probably not see too much of me, but that's okay. I'm just going to move it over as much as I can so that my name is not blocking the lyrics and see if I can get it square. Like Pat said, it's an art. 
Yeah, I can't really get it square because the angle of my computer and the angle of my stand is as good as it's going to get. All right. So I can make it perhaps a little straighter though. <laughs> there. <laughs> okay. So this is Break Them On Down. It's self explanatory, and you will remember it when I begin to play it. <laughs> Thank you. What a beautiful song for where we're going to go today. Thank you so much, Gina. And I'm seeing more people coming on, Jan and Hannah. So if Hannah's there, I think Jana's probably there too. Bill Taylor. Oh, my God, my lovely Bill. Scott, Marie, Sally. Hi, Sally from Syracuse. My dear friend, Sally. For those of you that don't know Sally, she is... Um, an intensive care nurse in Syracuse. So you can just imagine um, what she has been um, dealing with for many months now. Sally, we're so glad you're here with us. And so on Sunday mornings, I always share with you our five basic principles. These are the five basic principles that Unity uses and all of our teachings build on them. And so the first one is uh, very similar to our invocation. God is good and everywhere present. There is nowhere that you are that God is not. And that's why when we talk about um, the wildfires and we talk about the hurricanes and everything that's going on in people's lives, we can rest assured that God is right there. God is right there with them. The second one is that the spirit of God lives within each person. Therefore, all people are inherently good. All people are inherently good. I was watching um, some uh, 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 documentary this week, um, and it was with uh, Michael Nagler, and he is from the Meta Center for Nonviolence. And at the core of every religion, at the core of everything, the basic premise is that everybody is inherently good. And so we must remember that when we see people that are um, doing things that we would think, are, you know, maybe horrendous, at the very core, they are inherently good. And somewhere along their lives, they have um, gotten so much pain and so much hurt that how they're showing up is not truly who they are. And the third one is that we create our life experiences through our way of thinking. And that means that when we hold thoughts and when we hold and see them in our mind's eye and, and, and imbue them with our uh, emotions and our feelings, that's what's going to show up in our life. 
So um, I keep telling you to stand guard at the portal of your minds because you don't want to let in thoughts and hold them of things that you don't want to see happening. You want to hold the highest thoughts. And then the fourth one. The fourth one is that there is power in a pr affirmative prayer, which we believe increases our connection to God. Unity is all about affirmative prayer. We pray it as we see it. We see it through the eyes of God. And when we pray and meditate, our consciousness is connected into that one power. And therefore, we can see uh, we can hold the thoughts that we want. We can see that everybody is inherently good. And we know that God is always there. And of course, then the fifth one is knowledge of these spiritual principles is not enough. We must live them. We must put them into practice every single day, almost in every single moment. So there you have it. Those are your lifelines. Put them in your spiritual toolbox if they're not already there and carry that toolbox with you throughout your day. And now I'm going to introduce to you this morning who our daily word reader is. And it's somebody that you all know really well. And that is Carolyn Sanford. Good, Good morning, morning, everyone. Hi, Carolyn. Hi. Good to see you this morning. Great to be here. Uh, and so Carolyn is uh, one of our board members. Uh, she is our treasurer of our board, and we are so blessed to have her. And um, many of you may not know, but Carolyn uh, uh, works in the medical field in the um, IT department. And she uh, her department is extremely busy right now with all of the COVID testing and all. So Carolyn, we are blessed that you are taking the time to be with us this morning. Of course, it's wonderful to be here. Great. So we'll we'll turn it over to Carolyn to share the daily word with us. All right. Uh, today's daily word is love. I open my heart in love. I express the love I feel in my heart by showing my affection and giving nurturing attention. I speak loving, positive words that let those I care about know how much they mean to me. As my words affirm their goodness, beauty, and intelligence, I watch those qualities bloom like flowers blessed by sunshine. I extend my arms and embrace my family and friends with the warmth and comfort of unconditional love. I support my loved ones with compassion and care on their journey through life. I share my wisdom as I teach my experience as I advise, and my understanding as I console. I pray for those I love, knowing that the Christ within them is the light that guides them everywhere they go and in everything they do. Love, I open my heart in love. Thank you, Carolyn. And uh, you'll see Carolyn again later in the service. So very appreciative to have her with us this morning. And I do have to say that love, um, when I opened the Daily Word this morning and saw that it was love, I thought, oh, the universe does support. Because you will see how important that word is and what I'm going to be sharing with you this morning. So I'm going to um, turn it back over to Dina as she sings with her beautiful voice for us again. So to open up Pat's talk this morning, this is a David Roth song. And um, David Roth is known for writing these great story songs. Um, so many or possibly all of his songs are, are always based on something, um, something in real life. And um, he's worked a lot with schools and this song was co-written. It was written by David Roth and Severin Brown. And Severin shows up. He has a very short role in the song. So, um, so I think Severin was one of the students in this class uh, that, that, uh, that David wrote this song about. This is called Seven Wonders. Buzzing around. One shy girl in the back of the room, hardly making a sound. In run 
Children's teacher carrying books Latter in one hand Okay Here's the plan for today Got a little pop quiz I got a question for you Take out a pencil and paper that's all you gotta do. Number down the side of the page. One through seven. All right, here we go. Let's see what you know. Can you name the seven wonders of the world? Can you show me on a shiny globe the greatest tricks we've twirled? Can you name the seven wonders of the world? The students started scribbling, time was tripping by. Fifteen minutes later, pens were dripping dry. Who can tell us what they wrote? Hands began to wave. Can you name the seven wonders of the world? Can you show me on a shiny glow the greatest tricks we've taught? Can you name the seven wonders of the world? Dave said Egypt's pyramids, Tom said Taj Mahal, Severin and Everest. Cindy put Grand Canyon, feet up the Great Wall. Steve and Sloan, the Barrier Reef, and Panama Canal. Everyone responded, but the one girl in the back, she was still quite busy writing. Trying to get on track. The teacher ambled back to her desk. Penny, what have you got? Can you name the seven wonders of the world? Can you show me on a shiny glow the greatest tricks we've twirled? Can you name the seven wonders? This was kind of hard for me. I did the best I could. I think I've got it narrowed down from what I've understood. When I think of wonders and all of humankind, here are just some of the things that came to my mind to touch and taste and feel to hear and smell and see to breathe and laugh and love someone are all wonders to me. The class fell silent as she spoke, and they heard the teacher say, A, you got an A. Can you name the seven wonders? Show me on a shiny glow the greatest.
last tricks we've planned. Can you name the seven wonders? Can you name the seven wonders? Can you name the seven wonders of the world? Tina, you do it every week. You knock it out of the park. Thank you. When we see, when you, again, when you listen to what my talk's about, um, you will see how Dina's song fits right in. And I want to tell you, I mean, she is the wonder of my world um, because she is so talented. All I do is give her just a glimmer of what I think I'm going to be talking about. And she comes up with the very best of the best. So I am so grateful. So, so grateful. We all are. Uh, Patty Lacombe, I see you put her in. Dina's our American Idol and you are absolutely right. So let's get rolling here this morning. I'm starting out with a quote. Your breathlessness is a sign of your bravery. It means you are awake to what's happening right now. The world is in transition. Your breathlessness is a sign of your bravery. It means you are awake to what's happening right now. The world is in transition. And that quote comes from Valerie Carr. And doesn't that express exactly what it feels like for many of us right now? So for the next nine weeks, I will be taking you through a new book that just came out in June called See No Stranger. A memoir and manifesto, uh, a manifesto of revolutionary love written by Valerie Carr. In her bio, it says she is a civil rights activist, a lawyer, a filmmaker, innovator, and founder of the Revolutionary Love Project. The Revolutionary Love Project. I had my first encounter with Valerie Carr at the Parliament of World Religions in 2015 that was in Salt Lake City. And I fell in love with her. I fell in love with her clarity, with her brilliance, with her energy, with everything about her. And I have been following her ever since. And so it's very exciting for me uh, to be um, sharing with you this book. And, and I'm really sorry that I only have a brief amount of time on Sunday to share. So it's I have to pick and choose uh, what I'm going to tell you. But this book is absolutely a must read. And um, you will understand as you hear more from what I'm going to just a little bit I'm going to share with you this morning. So in the introduction, she tells of speaking at the historic Metropolitan AMC Church in Washington, D.C. on New Year's Eve in 2016. Reverend Dr. Barber invited her to speak and like many in the crowded church was in shock at the election results. Now, this was New Year's Eve 2016. Speaking of that, I just want to say, Jan reminded me yesterday that we have not sent out your letters from New Year's Eve 2019. No, 2020. No, 2019. No, 2020. Whatever. Anyway, they will be going out this week. Back to the New Year's Eve in 2016. The words that she spoke were, the future is dark, but what if? What if this darkness is not the darkness of the tomb, but the darkness of the womb? Not the darkness of the tomb, but the darkness of the womb. What if 
our America is not dead, but a country that is waiting to be born. What if the story of America is one long labor? What if all of our grandfathers and grandmothers are standing behind us now, those who survived occupation and genocide, slavery and Jim Crow, detentions and political assault? What if they are whispering in our ear, you are brave? You are brave. What does the midwife tell us to do? Breathe and then push. Breathe and then push. Once more. Breathe and then push. She says that this book is for a world in transition and revolutionary love is how we stay in the fire. So I want to define for you what she sees as revolutionary love. She says revolutionary love is the choice to enter into wonder and labor for others, for our opponents and for ourselves in order to transform the world around us. It is not a formal code or prescription but an orientation to life that is personal and political and rooted in joy. Loving ourselves is escapism. Loving only our opponents is self-loathing. Loving only others is ineffective. All three practices together make revolutionary love and revolutionary love can only be practiced in community. The three components again, loving ourselves is escapism, loving only our opponents is self-loathing, and loving only others is ineffective. All three practices together make revolutionary love, and revolutionary love can only be practiced in community. And friends, we are community. She goes on to say, Love is more than a feeling. Love is a form of sweet labor, fierce, bloody, imperfect, and life-giving. A choice we make over and over again. If love is sweet labor, love can be taught, modeled, and practiced. This labor engages all our emotions. It engages joy, because joy is the gift of love. Grief, because grief is the price of love. Anger, anger protects that which is loved. And when we think we have reached our limit, wonder is the act that returns us to love. Wonder is the act that returns us to love. So in this book, she has it broken up into three sub themes and we'll be covering these in the series going forward. The first one is see no strangers, which is loving others. The second one is tend the wound, loving opponents. And the third one is breathe and push loving ourselves. So today we're going to be looking at wonder. Now wonder can be a noun, which is a feeling of surprise mingled with admiration caused by something beautiful or unexpected. But wonder can also be a verb, the desire to be curious to know something. And in this context, this is what Valerie is expressing this as a verb to desire to be curious to know something. In the opening sentence of the first chapter, it begins, in the beginning, there was wonder. 
in the beginning there was wonder. And Valerie tells a little bit of her childhood and her background. She tells of being a little girl in Clovis, California and living on her family farm of nearly a century and seeing the shimmering galaxy that stretched across the sky. She talked to the stars as if they were her friends. She felt the earth beneath her, the animals around her, and the stars above her. They were all a part of her. She says, and wonder was my first orientation to them all the thing that connected me to them. You are a part of me. I do not yet know. You are a part of me. I do not yet know. This will become a familiar phrase throughout this whole series. This is exactly what she's writing about, about having the wonder to know about people we have not yet met. She speaks lovingly of her grandfather. She calls him Papa G. And he's very instrumental in her life. From her early uh, childhood, it was an extended family. Her grandparents lived with um, her parents and her. And she tells of Papa G tucking her into bed at night and reciting his favorite prayer to her, the Shabbat called Tati Vayo Na Lagi. And it translates, though hot winds cannot touch you. The hot winds cannot touch you. And he would repeat it over and over again as he rubbed her head, her forehead, until she fell asleep. Papa G told her lots of stories that span to centuries from India to America and ending with her. As a Sikh, which she is and her family, one of her favorite stories is the story of Guru Nanak, the first teacher of the Sikh faith. Growing up in the village of Punjab on the Indian subcontinent, he witnessed the violence between the Hindus and Muslims, which deeply troubled him. Now she's talking about Guru Nanak. So he was very troubled by what he was seeing. And so he went on a vision quest for three days. This was not exactly what people thought. They thought they, when he disappeared, they thought he was dead. They thought he might have drowned. So when he emerged on the third day, he came with a vision of oneness, the oneness of humanity and of the world. Now, what does this story remind you of? The three days in the tomb when Jesus reappears. This is Guru Nanak went on a vision quest and returned with the vision of oneness the oneness of humanity and of the world. He was thrown into a state of ecstatic wonder as a result of this vision. He began singing songs of devotion called Shabbats, praising the divine within him and around him. Now, again, going back to just last week and the two weeks before that, what happened with the women mystics of the Middle Ages? They got visions of, and they were in a place of ecstasy. Guru Nanak was in love. Love made him see with new eyes. Everyone around him was a part of him that he did not yet know. I see no stranger, said Guru Nanak. I see no enemy. This is the teaching he brought to the Sikhs. All of us could see the world in this way. 
He goes on to teach there is a voice inside of each of us called, and I can't say it, but I will spell it, H-A-U-M-A-I, Hamai, the I that names itself as separate from you. It resides in the bowl that holds our individual consciousness, but separateness is an illusion. And as we quiet our mind through music and meditation, our recitation or song, the boundaries begin to disappear. The bowl breaks. And when it breaks, in a brief moment, we taste the truth. Sweet as nectar, we are part of one another and joy rushes in. Now think back last week to Teresa of Avila. What happened when she leaned down to pick up the picture of the Christ and she saw his eyes and they met hers and she fell down in love. Isn't it interesting how these spiritual stories have similar context, how they similarly are attracted and are, are spoken in very much the same way. The Sikh word for God is Wahi Guru. Wahi is an expression of awe, which can surely be a part of wisdom. And Guru is the light that dispels darkness. Wahi Guru is a manifestation of wonder at the divine around and within. Wahi Guru, their word for God. Valerie says, on the farmland in California, under the stars, inside the music of my enormous family, the stories of my ancestors and the sounds of my grandfather's prayers, I was at home in my body and at home in the world. I was at home in my body and at home in the world. Can you think of a time when you felt that you were at home in your body and at home in the world? That might be something to ponder this week because wonder is our birthright. If our childhood was a place where we were safe and nurtured enough to de develop our capacity to wonder, at an early age, we began to wonder about the people in our lives, their thoughts and experiences, their pain and joy, their wants and needs. We may even begin at some level to see them as our equal. We are gaining information about how to love them. Wonder is the wellspring of, for love. Wonder is the wellspring for love. Another question for you. Do you remember wondering about the internal life of the people closest to you? Do you remember thinking, do they see the world the same as I do? That might not have been what you thought of as a child, but does that cross your mind today? Do they see the world the same as I do? Now, I said the people closest to us, our family or our best friends, it's easy to wonder about them and love them. And I have been talking about as children wonder can come easy. However, what about now? As children, it was easy to wonder because we didn't have a lot of conflicting ideas and thoughts. Everything was new. We were curious about everything. Just watch a little toddler. They're so curious. How easy, though, is it to wonder about people who seem like strangers or people who we see as outsiders? How easy is it for us to be curious and to wonder about them? Valerie says, 
When we choose to wonder about people we don't know, when we imagine their lives and listen for their stories, we begin to expand the circle of who we see as part of us. We prepare ourselves to love beyond what evolution requires. She goes on to say, the call to love beyond our own flesh and blood is ancient. It echoes down to us on the lips of indigenous leaders, spiritual teachers, and social reformers through the centuries. Guru Nanak called us to see no stranger. Buddha to practice unending compassion. Abraham to open our tent to all. Jesus to love our neighbors. Muhammad to take in the orphan. And Marabai to love without limit. They all expanded the circle of who counts as one of us. And therefore, who is worthy of our care and concern? These teachings were rooted in the linguistic, cultural, and spiritual context of their times. But they spoke of a common vision of our interconnectedness and interdependence. It is the ancient Sanskrit truth that we can look upon anyone or anything and say, Tat. Tavam Asi, I am that. It is the African philosophy, Ubuntu. I am because you are. It is the Mayan precept in Lakich. You are my other me. I am that I, I am that. I am because you are. You are my other me. Valerie goes on to say, what has been an ancient spiritual truth is now increasingly verified by science. We are all indivisibly part of one another. We share a common ancestry with everyone and everything alive on earth. The air we breathe contains atoms that have passed through the lungs of ancestors long dead. Our bodies are composed of the same elements created deep inside the furnaces of long dead stars. We can look upon the face of anyone or anything around us and say, as a moral declaration and a spiritual cosmo cosmology, cosmological and biological fact. You are a part of me. I do not yet know. You are a part of me. I do not yet know. So here is a spiritual practice that Valerie developed and I invite you to take it as your spiritual practice this week. As you move through your day and come across faces in your in the bank or the grocery store, wherever you may find yourself, you might say in your mind, sister, brother, aunt, uncle. Start to wonder about them as a person. When you do this, you retrain your mind to see more and more kinds of people as part of us rather than them. Practice this also with animals and plants, the earth. See them all here as part of us, part of you, part of me. Say in your mind, you are a part of me. I do not yet know. In doing this, it is a practice of orienting to the world with wonder. And it is a preparation for the possibility of creating a connection. When you see someone that you do not know, and you immediately translate into your mind that that's my sister or my aunt, that changes everything. 
I invite you to try it this week. And next week, we will look at We Grieve. So once again, working with this book, See No Stranger, A Memoir and Manifesto of Revolutionary Love. I just want to read you a couple of, of the um, comments on the back. This is from Elizabeth Gilbert, author of Eat, Pray, Love. In a world stricken with fear and turmoil, Valerie Koss shows us how to summon our deepest wisdom and show up to the labor with bravery and revolutionary love. Stunning, timely, and timeless. And Reverend ba uh, Barber, Valerie Carr is a revolutionary for justice who shows us how to labor for the world we dream of. In my darkest moments, I remember my Sikh sister's call to breathe and push. Her wisdom inspires us to build movements and seek the change that love demands. I encourage you to get it. I know that you will not be disappointed in it. And so now I'm going to invite Dina to take us into meditation. Quiet in prayer, I open my heart, I open my heart. When I'm quiet in prayer, I open my heart, Alleluia. Quiet in prayer, I see only love, see only love. When I'm quiet in prayer, I see only And the meditation this morning is by Sean Lambert. And it comes out of Mark 9, 15. As soon as all the people saw Jesus, they were overwhelmed with wonder and ran to greet him. So as you prepare for meditation and allow yourself to get comfortable, allow my words to just flow over you. May I know wonder. May I see wonder. May I hear wonder. May I touch with wonder. May I taste with wonder. May I sense with wonder. May I feel with wonder. May I be overwhelmed with wonder. May I run with wonder to greet this world.
may I walk with wonder. May I be still with wonder. May I know God and resonate with wonder. May all my senses resonate with wonder. And may I fly in my imagination with wonder. And so it is, and I let it be. Amen. The Offering Song is a song by Emily Fox. Let peace begin in my heart. And I'm going to give you the refrain here so you can join in on the refrain. And this song starts with the refrain. Um, so I'll just sing it through once so you can start it properly with me. Let me find the key here. Peace begin in my heart, let peace begin in my heart, let peace begin in my heart. So I become the word peace. All right, so here we go. The song starts right there with the refrain. Let peace begin in my heart, let peace begin. So I become the world peace. When I face another with a different point of view, may I remember the words of this song and listen as I hope. 
Let peace begin in my heart. Let peace begin in my heart. Let peace begin in my heart. So I become the word peace. When I talk to someone with words I want them to hear. My heart remain open to what they think and what they feel. Let peace begin in my heart. Let peace begin in my heart. Let peace begin in my heart. So I become the world. When I see different nations or people taking sides, may I always keep respect for their humanity and love inside. Let peace begin in my heart. Let peace begin in my heart. Let peace begin in my heart. So I become the word peace. Let peace begin in my heart. Let peace begin in my heart. Let peace begin in my heart. So I become the word peace. Thank you, Dina. That was lovely. I just have to make a comment here. Um, the meditation, I didn't connect with Dina. And here she sings a song about the seven wonders. And I'm, I'm reading the meditation thinking, oh, my gosh, that's the seven wonders was what that little girl wrote about. So it's so interesting how spirit synchronizes things when we don't even talk. Um, I just love that. I love when I see that happen. <laughs> I also uh, want to say um, I'm going to bring uh, Carolyn back on to do the offering in just a moment. But I do want to tell you folks that um, if you're interested in the Revolutionary Love Project, you can go to that uh, revolutionaryloveproject.com and you can read all about it. You can join it. Um, I really think that um, you will find it to be aligned with where uh, you are in your heart. So speaking of Carolyn, I'm going to bring her back on again so that she can uh, uh, share our offering blessing with us. And so Carolyn, I'm going to turn it over to you. All right. Hello again, everyone. Um, as your board treasurer, um, before I do the blessing, I just want to again um, thank you all for your continued generosity um, during this time of um, live streaming and not being together physically. It makes such a huge difference to be able to um, have this Sunday service, um, to be able to connect with everyone um, virtually. I can feel the love and the connection and the energy. And we're just um, so blessed to be able to receive this beautiful music and message that we receive um, each Sunday. So um, now is the time in the service, or if you would like to give, you should um, go to our website, unityofgreaterportland.org, and you can click on the donate button. Um, you can send a check to Unity of Greater Portland, Portland. Uh, just put it into the mail or you can sign up for our continuous giving program. Um, it's, it's so important to be able to continue this uh, time together that we have each Sunday. So our blessing today is divine love as me, blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give and all that I receive. Thank you God for the joy of giving. Thank you, Carolyn. That was beautiful. And yes, we are always so, so grateful for the generosity of you all. 
And so I want to just share with you a few announcements before we bring this time to a close. Um, we do have a new book group starting on uh, the 22nd, which is a Tuesday morning from 10 th 10.30 to noon. The new book that we're going to be uh, doing is the Book of Joy, which is with the Dalai Lama and Desmond Tutu. Um, we've been reading it already, and it is a great read. I know that many of you have already read it, but if you'd like to read it again with us, um, it's a wonderful time to um, connect and uh, share your thoughts about the book. Uh, so please go and register. And even if you've been in our book groups before, I need you to go and register. And the reason for that is, is that that, gives me the tool to send out the link to you every week so please go register um it's in our hot thought where to register and it's on our website so um if you're interested in being part of that please register also another place to register is one planet peace forum um this is a um virtual uh peace conference that's coming up and it will be from the 25th to the 27th, of which we are a partner, along with Abbey of Hope and United um, Religious Initiatives and several others, uh, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday from 3.30 or uh, 3 to 5.30, I believe it is, every day. They're going to have special speakers from all over the world. And on Sunday, the whole Sunday is going to be on youth. It's going to be done by the youth, and it's going to be focused for youth. So if you have children or grandchildren, uh, sign up. It is free. If you want to make a donation, you have the opportunity to do so. But it is going to be an awesome event. And that is on the 25th to the 27th of this month. So get out today and register. And Jack Siri is, um, still has open reservations for the spiritual retreat, of the silence retreat at Marie Joseph's that will happen in October uh, the 25th through the 28th. And you can still sign up for that. And then the season for intercultural, interspiritual, inter intercultural um Yes. Interspiritual, intercultural celebration. You couldn't think of the last word. Um, begins on the 23rd of September. Um, and that begins with a um, event that is going to take place uh, through St. Joseph's College. And it is a um, an evening with the author of Waking Up White. Um Debbie Irving, here's her book, Waking Up White. Um, she will be talking about this book, and we will, during the um, time of interspiritual, intercultural celebration, we'll be doing a book study on that book, along with Birthing a Greater Reality. Um, you have the opportunity to either sign up. Um, we will be posting this week when the dates are going to be for the book studies. If you were interested in hosting a book study and you either have a zoom account or have space within your home that you can socially distance and want to have people into your home please contact me so we can get that set up as well and there are other events that are happening in that whole time frame uh just a quickie sister lucy will be with us on november 1st many of you know sister lucy and um we look forward to having her on um, our live broadcast. So I think that's it. I'm going to bring Dina back as we close out with the peace song. There we go. No, not in that key though. We'll be much happier here. Let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. Let there be peace on earth, the peace that was. 
was meant to be. We've got us the one source, united all are we. Let us walk with each other in perfect harmony. Let this be the moment now. With every step I take, let this be my joy is now. To take each moment and live each moment in peace, eternity. And let us close now with a prayer for protection. The light of God surrounds us. We are the light. The love of God enfolds us. We are the love. The power of God protects us. We are the power. The presence of God watches over us. We are the presence. Wherever we are, God is and all is well. Join me at the coffee hour. Christine has put the link in and that will be momentarily. I'll be there. God bless you. I bow in gratitude to you for a wonderful morning, a wonderful day, and a wonderful week. See you next week.